Tired of dealing with annoying flies, fruit flies, and gnats in your home? The Zevo Flying Insect Trap is your ultimate solution. Don't wait. Check out the link in the video description now to get your Zevo Flying Insect Trap on Amazon and enjoy a bug-free home today. The Friday Letters page suggests that Cross Media Bar is the best UI ever, as one reader switches from gaming PC to Steam Deck. To join in with the discussions yourself, email GameCentral at metro.co.uk. As cheap as you like, I see the excellent indie detective gem The Case of the Golden Idol has made its way to all consoles now. It's been on PC and Switch for a while, came to Xbox and Game Pass less than a month ago and popped up on PSN a few days ago. Only listed for PlayStation 5 though, which seems a little silly to skip PlayStation 4. It's only £15 or £25 with the two DLCs. When people complain gaming is too expensive, I find myself disagreeing. The digital model current consoles and the Switch cost £250, £390, £260. Which is very competitive with last gen, where many feel all was right in the gaming world. Indie gaming and digital distribution means many of the best games are half or less of what a SNES cartridge cost in the 90s. Like the aforementioned game or something highly rated like Blasphemous 2. Subscription services allow you to access a huge number of games cheaply. I'm just coming to the end of a month's subscription for PS plus extra for £10.99. I've Platinum Spider-Man, Miles Morales and Ratchet Clank, Rift Apart and Closing In on Finishing Humanity. A well-spent £11. On PC, key resellers like CD Keys allow for a bargain. I just picked up Blasphemous 2, Turbo Overkill, and the excavation of Hobbs Barrow for a slightly guilty feeling £13.49. My last two Switch purchases in Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door have cost £37.50 each, day one thanks to Key's 25% off pre-order code. The most a day one PlayStation 5 game has cost me is £62. Which, while pricey, isn't that much more than the SNES days. As always you can just wait for not too long and the prices come down. You never need spend £62. All in all, it strikes me the cost of entry to gaming is as financially accessible as it's ever been. Simundu. Shameless example. I love how shameless American execs are about just not giving a damn about their employees, with the story of this bungee CEO buying all his expensive cars and then showing them off to someone they were going to lay off a couple of days later. The odd thing is that Sony do seem to disapprove, since there's been rumors for ages that they're not happy with bungee management. The public face of the games industry for the last year or two has been that of a heartless taskmaster, saying one thing while doing the other and working everyone to the bone while they spend $2 million on sports cars. It wouldn't be so bad if there was only some sense of shame about it all, but they make it very clear they don't care at all. Dinky. Expensive niche. $50 billion wasted on pushing VR headsets? The money some of these big companies throw around and waste is just obscene. VR is going to be nothing but a niche until you can pipe it into our brains for holodecks are real. I'm a hardcore gamer and I don't want a headset stuck to my face for more than an hour, tops, and that's despite some modern VR games being really good. It's just not a practical idea and while it sort of works with how far they've come, the things are too expensive on top of that. For ordinary people, an impulse purchase is tens of pounds, not hundreds. No wonder headset can be picked up so cheaply secondhand. Corey, email your comments to GameCentral at metro.co.uk. An embarrassment of riches. I'm not sure I really understand why Microsoft would delay Avowed just because they've got a busy Christmas lineup. I wouldn't really call Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, Avowed, and STALKER too busy. Or at least not so much that it would be too much for them all coming out at once. In fact, I would imagine that Xbox fans would be pleased to have plenty of choice for once. I know Microsoft's big release is Call of Duty, Black Ops 6, but that's not an exclusive, so it's not really competing with any of those. I do think that Microsoft has a problem with predicting how big a game is actually going to be. They're fooling themselves if they think that Indiana Jones and STALKER 2 are going to be anything other than minor hits, and I don't think that would change even if they were on PlayStation 5 as well. Saying that, 
I think they've realized that Avowed isn't going to be much of a draw. It looks very unexciting so far, so either it.